You're welcome to Women of Faith Online Ministry. I believe that you guys had a wonderful festive season and a spirit-filled one. And I believe that you spend more time with God in this season of celebration. Uh, during my festive season, I also spend a lot of time with God. And I, I've witnessed God lifting me up from a position that I was in to another position. And I had learned a lot of things. Uh, the Holy Spirit was revealing to me a lot of things about me which I had to, to adjust and some of the things that I thought I was doing and I was not doing. So that was a growth to me and one of the things that he helped me with and that he made me uh, realize or should I say the, the suggestion that he gave me concerning this ministry was the fact that I should start uh, an intro video, I should include it. And when he threw this idea into me, I was confused. I was like, okay, where do I start, Holy Spirit? I understand that I have to have an intro video, but where do I start? Because in the beginning, I had committed this ministry to him. I didn't start it without him. I started it at his voice. So I told him clearly that anything that I'm going to do in this ministry must come from you. Then he gave me this idea of a flower in water, as you have seen uh, in the beginning of this video. And then I was like, what does that mean in the first place? And what are the ways that I must put there? And the idea that he gave to me was that this is a woman of faith ministry. And it, 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 it started to change the life of people, to inspire women again, and to uplift women from a position where the, left, the devil has suppressed us to a position where God wants us to be. And it was like, if we allow him as the spirit to fill us up and to, to, to sit upon us, there's this other sermon that I was watching, the pastor was speaking about Holy Spirit sit upon me. And he was like, I am the drop of water that is falling upon the flower. Because we know in John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39, the Holy Spirit is compared to water. And he was like, like every, each and every child of God has a seed that has been planted into him or her. And if we allow him, the Holy Spirit, to fall upon us, that is when we will be able to break through any circumstance to push it through to the purpose of God upon our life. Because each and every person has a purpose. Even Jesus himself had a purpose and he fulfilled it before he lives. And that's one thing that is more important, fulfilling the purpose that God has given to you. And we can't do it without him. So as we allow him to fall upon us, as we allow him to lead us, as we allow him to give us growth, like the, the, the plant that was receiving water from heaven. He says that that is when we'll be able to break through any circumstance because we have that potential hidden in us. We have our true colors hidden in us. If you look at a flower as it grows, you can never tell if it's gonna be a yellow flower, red flower, a rose or whatever, unless if you are the one who has planted it, then you, can, you are the one who will know as God knows because he has planted us. So, as we allow him, he allows us to grow and our purpose is, be is beginning to be revealed to us. And we begin to even reveal our true colors of who God wants us to be and what God wants us to do because we are here to do something. And that was the first thing and I did and I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful because it was not easy to find exactly what the Holy Spirit wanted, the idea that, uh, or the picture that the Holy Spirit had given to me. It took a while, it took about weeks, and then voila, I, I now found it. I found the, exactly what the Holy Spirit wanted. And that's, that's, the, that, that's the joy of allowing the Spirit of God to lead you. That's the joy of allowing the presence of the Holy Spirit to sit upon you. And the other thing that God was teaching me, uh, He gave me a lot of messages. And I really can't wait to share with you the messages but today I'm just gonna share one of those messages and it's a message for women and I was struggling with uh, finding the proper topic to put on that message but then I just knew it's message for women and the kind of message that God gave to me it refers to also husbands as well and I was like God I'm not even married in the first place yet but how am I even going to talk about a husband when I don't even have one? And God was like, you have my spirit. And you have me living in you. And it is me who created everything. 
So if I speak through you, there is nothing that I'm limited to. I, as God, I don't need to be married to speak about marriage. I don't need to become anything to speak about that thing. So uh, before wasting any time, I'll just go straight to the message. I'm going to be reading from two Bibles. The first one is uh, this one, which is um, King James Version. And the second one is the English Standard Version. So I'm going to read from both. But then it's just one scripture that I'm going to read from English Standard Version. So I believe you also have your, 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 your Bible with you. Or you have something to write on. Because it's important to write whenever God is teaching us. So I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 3. So I'm talking about the topic. It's a message for women. But the subtopic is the power of influence. And I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 6. If you can go with me, if you have your Bible closer, you can go with me as well in your version that you have. I'm going to read from King James Version. Chapter 3, verse 6. It speaks about the woman where she was tempted. And the Bible says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did it. So, my Bible, I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible doesn't tell me of how Eve got to the tree in the first place. And if you listen to the conversation before verse 6, you will know that Eve knew that they are not supposed to eat from that tree in the first place, she and the husband. And the devil comes and throws an idea into her mind, a question into her mind, to say, did God really say you should not eat of any tree? And then the woman tells the devil about how they are allowed to eat any tree except this one. But the problem is that now the woman entertained the devil to such a point where now she started now looking into the tree and seeing that it was good. So whatever that now she started looking, uh, I mean, whatever that she started seeing from that tree was the goodness of it and how it is desired to be eaten. And that's the problem you know, with most of, most of us in our lives. We allow the devil. When something comes up and I know that God has said to me, I should not do this, or I should not go there, or I shouldn't, anything that you know that God has placed in your heart not to do. When we know that we are not supposed to do that, the devil comes, he throws an idea, he throws questions to question what the word of God says. And we, and we entertain him to a level where we end up seeing that thing that God said we shouldn't do or eat as a good thing to do. So... One thing that I, I, I noticed uh, from this scripture, and I started reali re I mean, relating it to the scripture in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, and I realized that it is three types of temptations that led the woman to commit sin. Committing sin here is doing what is against the will of God. When you know that it is the will of God, for you to preach, just preaching, and you don't do it, it is sin before God. When you know that you are supposed to pray, and you don't do it, you don't do as God wants you to do, it's a sin before God. So the sin here was doing against the will of God. So those temptations, those three types of temptation led a woman to sin, but not her alone. She ended up also leading the husband to sin. So um, I'm a person who likes to write most of the time, so I wrote my notes in my notebook here. And what I wrote, the first, I just summarized the scripture in point form, and I said the first one was the last of the flesh from First John chapter two. The last of the flesh in verse six, it says, she saw that the tree was good for food. So most of the time. As women, we get tempted to yield to the desires of the flesh. There are things that you know that you can't do or you are uncomfortable of doing. But because it seems to be good before you, because everyone else is doing it, you end up 
desiring it and we end up yielding to those desires of the flesh. And the second one was the lust of the eye. The Bible says, um, the other thing is that she saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. And the eye has to do with the mind, whatever that I see. That's why uh, most of the time you find yourself, you're watching something too much or a horror. Then when you sleep, you end up dreaming about it. Or during the day, you walk around the school or wherever you work or wherever you are. Then you're still thinking about what you saw. So the last of the eye to me, I said, it's yielding to the desires of the mind. One speaker once said, you have to think about what you're thinking about. So the last of the eye also has to do with what is in your mind and what your mind desires. You know, our mind is so powerful. It can end up even creating wonderful pictures. Like right now, as you, you may find that before you sat down to watch this video, you were busy thinking about your future that you are still far from getting into because you have this big picture that is created by your mind to you. And the third um, scene that is uh, shown in First John chapter 2 is the pride of life. And from this very scripture that we read in Genesis, it says, the tree was desired to make one wise. And if you listen to what the devil said before then, he said, surely you shall not die. Because God knows that if you eat this, you will be like him. And that's the pride of life. If you look at one thing that threw the devil out of heaven is pride itself. And one thing that shows that we are doing the will of the devil is when we have pride in us. And one thing that threw him into heaven is pride because he wanted to be like God. And he thought he can even be above God. And that's the pride of life. And that is the spirit of disobedience to God. And then they say that after she had entertained the devil to this, lev to this level, she ended up going through these types of temptations. And at the end, the Bible says, she took the fruit thereof and did it. So most of the time, we don't need to entertain the devil. We don't need to entertain the devil. If there is something that I know that God said I should do, and the devil comes and says I cannot do, then I don't need to entertain him. I said the subtopic of this message is the power of influence, and which is the power that God has given to women. Um, the Bible doesn't say God gave to women. But it's something that as women we have, it's in it, in us. So that power of influence made Adam as well to eat the fruit. So firstly, before I get to the points that I want to say, I'm going to firstly, because you know our God is God who provides solution for everything. Wherever we go wrong, he provides solution. And I'm going to read now from English Standard Version. I'm going to read Romans chapter 12 which is one of my favorite scriptures. When I go through things, when I go through things that I feel like I cannot overcome, I go to this chapter and it, re it, re it renews me again. And I begin to now start the work of God again. So it's uh, Romans chapter 12. Uh, you can go there with me if you have your Bible with you. From verse 1. I'm just going to read three verses, verse 1 to verse 3. So these are the solution. I mentioned three types of temptations, and now I'm going to mention three types of solutions. How we can apply the word of God to overcome these temptations when the devil comes. The first one, it says, the first verse, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And my, my, my King James Version, it says, which is um, the perfect offering to God. So, the first uh, last was the last of the flesh. And Paul's provide a solution. He says, submit your bodies to God. There's a scripture which says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The Bible doesn't say resist the devil and he will flee, but only if you submit yourself firstly to God, such that the devil, when he comes, he doesn't find anything to tempt anymore. Then 
you will be able to resist the devil. You won't even have to chase him away, but he will flee from you. So the first thing is to submit your body to God. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Women were so blessed in the beginning. We were living in joy. Women, both men and women were living in joy. And by entertaining the enemy, we ended up going through cases that most of them were still going through them today or we are still going to go through them today in today's life. So we need to submit ourselves to God and we need to resist the devil. Then he will flee from us. The second verse says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So I said the second solution to the last of the eye, which has to do with the mind, is that you, we need to renew our minds. You ought to renew your mind every day through the word of God. Without reading the word of God, you can't overcome the devil. Jesus Christ, when he was tempted, uh, he overcame the enemy through the word of God. If you look at people who overcame the enemy, who were faced with death and they were not afraid, it was because they were filled with the word of God and filled with the spirit of God, such that they didn't fear anything that the enemy was threatening to do to them. And they, they overcame through the, 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 the word of God. Child of God, you ought to fill your mind with the word of God and refuse to compromise. The Bible says do not conform to the patterns of the world. Refuse to compromise what you believe in. Refuse to compromise what God has presented before you. And the third, the solution to the third um, type of temptation, it's in verse 3. It says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. So, stick to your name as a child of God. Do not think of yourself as highly than what God says you are. And do not see yourself lower than what God says you are either. So see yourself as God sees you. No better, no worse. That is how we can overcome pride. The devil comes and tries to say you will be like God. Say, I don't need to be like God. I am a child of God. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, he was so obedient and humble to the, to the death of the cross, though he was God himself. He didn't need to be reminded that he was God. He humbled himself, though he knew that he is God. So we don't need the devil to remind us of who we are in order to, for him to lead us into temptation. So we need to see ourselves as God sees us. So one thing that I wanted the children of God to know was that the devil will always present a partial truth to validate his life. So that's what the devil does. You see, he speaks to the devil, to, I mean to Jesus, I'm sorry. He speaks to Jesus, then he says, throw yourself down for it is written that this is what happen, this and this. He doesn't come and say, if you do this, this will be the consequence. He comes to the woman, he says, if you eat this, you will be wise, you will know good and bad. He doesn't say, this is the consequence, but if you see, this will be a sin against God and God will do this. So he, he presents the partial truth. To validate his life. And that's one thing that we need to watch out against the children of God. Sometimes he, pre he presents scriptures that we have read in the script, in the Bible to say, you know the Bible says this, so it can't be wrong. So um, one thing that I wanted to say to wrap up everything is that women were created to be helpers to their husband. So that's what God created us to be. In, verse, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, we are created to be helpers to our husbands or our future husbands. If you are not yet married, that's one thing that God has given you to be. And one thing that this scripture made me to realize was that then God said, let me create a suitable helper for him. Then God took a rib and made a woman. And so in the first, first, first part is that God created a man. He gave him necessary skills to fulfill the mandate. The Bible says he created him and he gave him work to do. So he created a man and gave him the skills, necessary skills for him to do the work. Then he took a part of a man and made a woman with it. And hence that's why the woman is a suitable helper because now you contain the, the, the necessary skills 
to be the helper to the mandate that has been given to the man. And that's what God has given to us. That is why as women, we have that power in us to influence the man. We have the power to influence even the world. So we were created to be suitable helpers. And we need to understand that. And we need to use it in the way that God wants us to. We need to use this power of influence. So it is our duty as women to make sure that we become suitable. I mean, we have been made to be suitable helpers. So it is our duty to make sure that we fulfill the mandate of God by helping men or the world or our husbands or our future husbands to fulfill the mandate of God by fulfilling our own mandate as well that God has given to us. So as women, we are born with that power of influencing. You know, my mother usually says that if you want things to go well and if you want things to change in the house and if you want everyone to go on the right path, just put a woman. Because the women have that power in them to influence. And whether we influence negatively or positively, it is up to us. So as children of God, we need to seek the definition of a woman from the word of God, not from what the world says. The world will come and say, no, 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 there's 50, 50, there's 1, 2, 3, or whatever that the world may present to you. But if it is not according to what God is saying, if it is not what God is saying, then you're going to be uh, a woman who influences the world in a negative way. And that is why things have now become messed up. That is why things now are no longer the way God had planned them to be in the beginning. It's because as women, we don't seek the definition of a woman from the Bible. Her duty as a woman. So hence we end up leading the world into a wrong direction or our homes into a wrong direction. So as women, we are born with the power to influence. I believe that you will become a positive influencer, a woman who lean on the world, a woman who influence the world through the world. There's, there, there's this other picture that I had and that I loved a lot. It says the woman, a wise woman uses the word of God as a sword to fight her battles, as a sword to fight each and every battle that is presented before him. And the wise woman used the word of God to speak change in her surrounding. So I believe that you are blessed by the message. Go out there and be the, the powerful woman who influences the world through the word of God. Amen. Till we meet again. I need you to open my eyes. You see that you're shaping my life